Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. <clears throat> Today is uh, Wednesday, the 18th of January. And today in the church, we, it's, we start the week of prayer for Christian unity. The week of prayer for Christian unity. Uh, it's from the 18th to the 25th of January, where we pray in the church for the unity of all believers everywhere. Um, the church is very fragmented. There's east, west, and a lot in between. So... We pray for Christian unity uh, when we are united in the one gospel. We are more effective in our ministry. So, week of prayer starts today. <clears throat> and, um, all right, so let's pray. Let's pray as we start this new day. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Above you, the Holy One arises, and above you, God's glory appears. Arise, shine out, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Though night still covers the earth and darkness the peoples, above you, the Holy One arises, and above you, God's glory appears. The nations will come to your light and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will lie open continually, shut neither by day nor by night. The sound of violence shall be heard no longer in your land or ruin and devastation within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you daylight, nor moonlight shine upon you. But the Lord will be your everlasting light. Your God will be your splendor. For you shall be called the city of God, the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is King. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. 
This is the Christ, the chosen of God, the one who will bring healing to the nations. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, <clears throat> born of the house of his servant David. <clears throat> Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from an high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. This is the Christ, the Chosen of God, the one who will bring healing to the nations. And the Collect Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our psalm this morning is Psalm 81. Psalm 81. <clears throat> Just a second. All right, Psalm 81. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Sing merrily to God our strength. Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. Take up the song and sound the timbre the tuneful lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon as at the full moon upon our solemn feast day. For this is a statute for Israel, a law of the God of Jacob. The charge is laid on the people of Joseph when they came out of the land of Egypt. I heard a voice I did not know that said, I eased their shoulder from the burden. Their hands were set free from bearing the load. You called upon me in trouble and I delivered you. I answered you from the secret place of thunder and proved you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, if you would but listen to me, there shall be no strange God among you. You shall not worship a foreign God. I am the Lord your God who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I shall fill it. But my people would not hear my voice and Israel would not obey me. So I sent them away in the stubbornness of their hearts and let them walk or after their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. Then I should soon put down their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. Those who hate the Lord would be humbled before him and their punishment would last forever. But Israel would, would I feed with the finest wheat and with honey from the rock would I satisfy them. 
Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. And our prayer. Father of mercy, keep us joyful in your salvation and faithful in your covenant. And as we journey to your kingdom, ever feed us with the bread of life, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, let's leave that there. Move to our Old Testament reading, which is in Amos, Amos chapter 8. Amos chapter 8, all of it. <coughs> The basket full of ripe fruit. So this is what the Sovereign Lord showed me. A basket of ripe fruit. What do you see, Amos? I asked. He asked. A basket of ripe fruit, I answered. <clears throat> then the Lord said to me, The time is ripe for my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. In that day, declares the Lord, the songs in the temple will turn to wailing. Many, many bodies flung everywhere. Silence. Hear this, you who trample the needy and do away with the poor of the land, saying, When will the new moon be over? that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath be ended, that we may market wheat, skimping on the measure, boosting the price, and cheating with dishonest scales, buying the poor with silver, and the needy for a pair of sandals, selling even the sweepings with the wheat, the Lord has shown, uh, sworn by himself the pride of Jacob. I will never forget anything they have done. Will not the land tremble for this? And all who live in it mourn? The whole land will rise like the Nile. It will be stirred up and then sink like the river of Egypt. In that day, declares the sovereign Lord, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your religious festivals into mourning and all your singing into weeping. I will make all of you wear sackcloth and shave your heads. I will make that time like mourning for an only sun and the end of it like a bitter day. The days are coming, declares the Sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land, not a famine of food or a thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. People will stagger from sea to sea and wander from east, north to, from north to east, searching for the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. In that day, the lovely young women and strong young men will faint because of thirst. Those who swear by the sin of Samaria, who say, as surely as your God lives, Dan, or as surely as the God of Beersheba lives, they will fall never to rise again. Amen. Okay, so the time is ripe for judgment for the people of God. Amos is shown a basket of ripe fruit, and the Lord is using that basket of ripe fruit as, a, as an image, as, a, as an object lesson 
to let him know that that basket of ripe fruit represents the people of Israel who are ripe for the picking, as it were, ripe for judgment. Their sin has become full, has become ripe, and now judgment is coming. There's a number of things here why God is bringing judgment. He talks about the fact that they, they can't wait for the new moon to end. That is the new moon festivals, the feast days. They can't wait for the Sabbath to be over so they can go and start selling again and making money and, and so on. So that's in the first place, they are not focused on God because during the new moon and the festivals, they are to be, and the Sabbath, they are to be focusing on God. But they, they, they sort of go through these, process, these times of, of, of festivals in order to get to the next bit. To the get to the next bit of selling. When is the next market day? When is the next day for selling? Because they are seeking to make money more than they value their time with God. They want to go. They value their work. They value their career. They value their money more than they value God. So that's the first thing. But then the second thing is that when they do op open the market, they cheat. <clears throat> and they, and, and, they, and they, yeah, they, they cheat the poor. They, they skimp on the price and the measure. They boost the price and they cheat with dishonest scales and so on. So they, even though, and, and of course, one go with the other, the neglect of worship of God, the, the, just going through the ritual means that in your in your Monday to to Saturday or Monday to Friday life, you you do, you're not honest. You're dishonest because you don't in the first place because you don't have a a a a, a solid a genuine relationship with God. In the rest of your life, you become a dishonest and cheating person. And sisters and brothers, the two go together. If you had a deep and personal relationship with God, if you spend time with God and you're not hurrying for the Sabbath to be over, for the feast day to be over, so you can get on with your own personal business. If you spend that time with God, then your character would change, your, your behavior would change, you would be a different kind of person. But because that is not important to you, you become a cheating and a dishonest person. And God is saying, judgment is coming. The people are ripe and ready to be judged because of their dishonesty and their injustice and, uh, to, the, to, to the others. He said there's going to be a famine, a famine for the word of God. People are going to want to hear God's word, but they won't hear it. Now uh, The time is coming when there will be a famine, not for food, but for God's word. People are going to long to hear. They want to hear <clears throat> the truth, but they, 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 won't, they won't hear it. They, they, it will not be available for them because they, they have forfeited, as it were, their right to the word of God. And, and in a sense, Amos is saying the time is coming when God's word uh, you know, will, will, will no longer be available for us. And if we don't have those word, God's word in our hearts, then we will stagger and seek to find it and we won't be able to. All right, let's, let's leave Amos there because we have another reading, which is 1 Corinthians <coughs> chapter 7. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 to 24. Now, for the matters you wrote about, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman. But since sexual immorality is occurring, each is, occur, is occurring, each man should have sexual relations with his own wife, and each woman with her own husband. The husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife, and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but yields it to his wife. Do not deprive each other, except perhaps by mutual consent 
and for a time, so that you may devote yourselves to prayer. Then come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. I say this as a concession, not as a command. I wish that all of you were as I am, but each of you has your own gift from God. One has this gift, another has that. Now to the unmarried and the widows I say, it is good for them to stay unmarried as I do. But if they cannot control themselves, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. To the married I give this command, not I but the Lord. A wife must not separate from her husband. But if she does, she must remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband. And a husband must not divorce his wife. To the rest I say this, I, not the Lord, if any brother has a wife who is not a believer and she is willing to live with him, he must not divorce her. And if a woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife. And the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean. But as it is, they are holy. But if the unbeliever leaves, let it be so. The brother or the sister is not bound in such circumstances. God has called us to live in peace. How do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband? Uh, how do you know, husband? whether you will save your wife. Nevertheless, each person should live as a believer in whatever situation the Lord has assigned to them, just as God has called them. This is the rule I lay down in all the churches. Was a man already circumcised when he was called? He should not become uncircumcised. Was a man uncircumcised when he was called? He should not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing. Each person should remain in the situation they were in when God called them. And so were you a slave when you were called? Don't let it trouble you. Although if you can gain your freedom, do so. For the one who was a slave when called by to faith in the Lord is the Lord's freed person. Similarly, the one who was free when called in Christ is Christ's slave. You were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of human beings. Brothers and sisters, each person as responsible to God should remain in the situation they were in when God called them. All right, uh, there's a lot here. There's a lot about married life and um, and relationships and sisters and brothers, I dare you know this is these are parts of the scripture where people for the skip over, but they are very wise advice for us in our world today, especially in our world today. I mean, Paul was writing in a Roman world which is very similar to our world, um, and and you know so here you know, advice to 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 husband and wife to to engage in sexual relationship and not to deprive each other. Um, the, you know, it, it's very important because Paul makes the point, and it's such an important point, especially today in our, you know, sex-induced world in which we live, this, you know, sex-saturated world. Everywhere you turn, there's sexual images and, and all sorts of things, enticing and, and to the eye and all that. And Paul makes the point. He says, if... If the husband and the wife are attracted physically to each other and spend and, and, and spend time with each other, passionately making love to each other, then there will be no room for um for for this for, for, for temptation. He said, um he said, uh, where is it? Um <clears throat> do not deprive each other, except for then he says. Then come together again so that Satan, this is verse 5, will not tempt you 
because of your lack of self-control. In other words, if you devote yourselves to each other as husband and wife, then you will not yield to the temptation to go somewhere else, to do, you know, to, to be enticed by some other girl, by some other man, and so on, because you are passionately in love with your husband, with your wife. And uh, you know, as I said, it's practical, very practical. You devote yourselves to each other so that the there will be no room for the devil to take advantage of you in your, in your relationship. Um, he said, I wish that all of you were as I am, that is unmarried, but all of us as a gift from God. We, all, we are all called to different things. You know, some people are called to married life. Other people are called to not marry. But but um, but Paul's point is that whatever your calling is, remain in that calling if, if that's what God has called you to. Um, don't think that just because you are not married, you must get married. That has caused lots of problem for people. And 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 many, many people marry who shouldn't have been married. And many are single who need to be married. I mean, there's a, you know, we need this balance, but it's about what God has put into your heart and so on. Um, anyway, I, I must stop there. It's a lot, but uh, it's great practical uh, advice for relationships, especially in our world today. And, you know, we, 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 we shy away from these things, but they are real and they are, um, they are practical for us. For our lives, especially for families, the couples, and so on, it is, you know we don't always find these kind of advice in scripture, but we do, and it's there, and it's quite a lot, and um, we need to be, we need to take note of them. Let's pray. Our Father and God, we give you thanks for giving us this new day. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us safely. To the beginning of another day and we thank you for the rest of the past night and so lord we entrust this day our lives afresh to your loving care we ask lord that you will watch over our going and coming keep us keep us from all evil uh, help us lord not to yield to the temptations of this world. As Paul talks about the sexual and uh, temptations. Lord, help us not to, not to be enticed by these temptations in our sex-induced, sex-crazed world in which we live, but rather to rise above these and so many other temptations in our, in our society today. Lord, we pray that you'll give us grace to be overcomers this, this new day, to overcome the temptations of our hearts and of our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I want to pray for, uh, in addition to praying for our family, our church family, pray for my friend Maxine, who's been in the hospital in a &E all night. And so, Lord, I pray for uh, Maxine and pray that you will uh, be with her. Uh, Lord, I pray for healing in her body. We pray that you will strengthen her, Lord, and uh, that the, the doctors and those who are attending to her will be able to prescribe the right medicine and the right um, remedy for her illness. So, Lord, I pray for Maxine. I pray for Ezine and, uh, and, and, and that family at this difficult time for our sister Maxine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for uh, our church family and all those who, who are sick this morning, those on our hearts, those on our minds. Lord, we bring them to you. We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine and for the end, oh God, for the end of that war. Lord, oh God, we pray for the end of the war in Ukraine. And we ask God that you will change the hearts of Putin and all those who perpetrate war, that they will have a heart of love and, and a heart for peace 
and that they will <clears throat> pull out of that country and, and go back to their own country and allow the people of Ukraine to pick up their piece to pieces and put their lives back together again. Lord, we pray for those people. Have mercy on them, we pray. Lord, we pray for, for rulers and leaders in our world. Give them wisdom in the decisions they make each day. We pray for them. We pray for the church. Today we start praying for the unity of the church. Lord, we, we pray for your people everywhere, fragmented, all different types of de denominations and churches and beliefs and, and so many groups of people who call themselves Christians and name the name of Christ. And yet we are divided, we are fragmented, and everyone think they have the truth. Oh God, draw us in un unity to each other, Lord, we pray. Not just, a, not, just, not, not, not just a physical unity, but a spiritual unity, a unity in, in, our, in our worship, a unity in our, in our understanding, a unity, Lord God. You pro Lord Jesus, you pray that we be one uh, so that the world will know. Lord, we pray for the oneness of your church. We pray that all divisions will be broken down and that your people everywhere who call on your name will, will, find un will be united in Christ. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer the collect for unity lord and heavenly father through your son jesus christ you have called us to be one in the family of your church give us grace to break down the barriers which keep us apart that accepting our differences we may grow in love for one another to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, morning prayer. Be with us, Lord, in all our prayers and direct our way toward the attainment of salvation that among the changes and chances of this mortal life, we may always be defended by your gracious help. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord watch over you and protect you. May the Lord guide you in on your journey today, sisters and brothers. And may the Lord grant you his all-sufficient grace to strengthen you, to keep you from temptation. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Goodbye, sisters and brothers.